Welcome everyone to the Q&A session for our upcoming course, Sound Healing Alchemy to Transmute Difficult Emotions. The seven week experience with vibrational frequencies to liberate resiliency, vitality, and joy. I'm Lisa Bunnies, and I'm really excited to be hosting this Q&A conversation for the Shift Network, where we'll explore the teachings of Eileen McCusick and address questions about her upcoming seven-week course, Sound Healing Alchemy to Transmute Difficult Emotions, which begins Tuesday, June 9th. And a little later, I'll explain how you can participate in the course, even if you can't attend the live sessions. But first, I want to introduce our guest. Eileen McCusick is a researcher, writer, inventor, practitioner, educator, and speaker on the effects of audible sound on the human body and biofield. Eileen, who has an MA in Integrative ed Education, has been researching sound since 1996, and she's the originator of biofield tuning uh, with uh, thousands of students trained worldwide since 2010. And she's also the founder of the Biofield Tuning Institute, which conducts grant-funded, IRB-approved, and peer-reviewed studies on the human biofield. She's also the author of the award-winning best-selling book, Tuning the Human Biofield, Healing with Vibrational Sound Therapy. And in just a few minutes, we're going to open up for your questions for Eileen. But first, uh, let's bring Eileen on the line. Welcome, Eileen. It's great to see you today. Thanks, Lisa. It's great to see you, too. Yes, you look all tanned and <laughs> living the life in Jamaica. Good for you. Uh, we can talk about that a little bit. But first, I want to let everyone know we have the rest of our time together to dive into our viewer questions for Eileen as we prepare for her upcoming course. Again, that's called Sound Healing Alchemy to Transmute Difficult Emotions, which begins Tuesday, June 9th. And if you want to sort of follow along with us, check out the website and learn more about the course. You can visit soundalchemycourse.com to see the full description. Uh, but in the meantime, let's go ahead and get into some questions. This is some fascinating information you have. Uh, so viewers, if you have a question for Eileen, go ahead and type them in. I'll be happy to pass them along. Uh, but let's go ahead and start out with a really foundational one because Eileen, you, you've taught courses with the Shift Network before and, and a lot of people have really enjoyed them. Uh, but a lot of them are also asking, um, if they've taken your other courses, will this one be a repeat or is it new material, a combination of both? It's a it's a bit of both. You know, it's I, I, it bores me to do the same thing over and over. So I definitely want to keep myself entertained in this work um, and, you know, mix it up. I think some of the things that are different is one, I've been in Jamaica for since mid-December and I've been able to go to the beach every single day. Um, I've been doing uh, healing work. I've been doing a lot of <clears throat> personal growth. And being in this environment has been really nourishing and supportive for me. Uh, you know, my my I've, I'm well rested in this series. My voltage is high. It's filmed in Jamaica, um, and there's a special vibe here in Negril. You know, and I, I think that what what people kind of instinctively knew they needed these last few months, like getting to the ocean, being grounded, um, being in the sunshine. I, I, you know, I have food, I've been eating food right from the bush. Um, so I've been in a very, very fortunate position that's helped to support my own coherence and voltage. And that transmission definitely comes through in this, you know, just the vibe of Jamaica. It's, it's very different than what's going on in the States. Another thing that's really different that, that happened in the series, it is pre-filmed, the modules have all been filmed, um, but I will be on live for Q&A after the broadcast of each one. And uh, it's on emotional alchemy. And it's, you know, I think that given the circumstances of the last few months, people have been put into situations that is bringing up all kinds of emotions, just all kinds of emotions, just across the board, you know, and very strong emotions. and we don't we're not really educated when we're growing up what to do with our emotions and so what we end up doing what most people end up doing is some form of suppression of some kind or another and what happens in this course is we we actually you know kind of unearth m most of the major emotions that we experience and we kind of induce them into the system through this sympathetic resonance through the ether. I'll get into a particular emotion and we'll really feel it. We'll, we'll let ourselves really feel the emotion. And then what happens is uh, 
you know, emotions really only last about 90 seconds when we experience them. It's one of the things that I talk about in the series is that, you know, life plucks our strings and our strings vibrate for about 90 seconds and then it's over. And, and so knowing that, and then knowing kind of what to do with them. But in this, in this series, what I do is each time we get into an emotion, we ask the question, what is the antidote to this emotion? So if I let myself feel it fully, and I let that 90 second wave for however long it takes as we're working move through me. And I ask, what is the antidote that arises for me to help me to manage this difficult emotion? Um, it, it arises. And what happened to me as I was conducting these sessions is that every time we got into this alchemy place where we were feeling the emotions together and we were transmuting these emotions, every single hair on my body stood up and I had goosebumps like I have never had before. So there's some very powerful transmutation that happens in these. Also, after I finished the series, my energy level went through the roof. Like I didn't believe how much energy I had. It totally leveled me up. Me conducting that series because I put myself in every session completely changed my own life and I've received hundreds of, of sessions. I, I couldn't believe how transformative it actually ended up being as far as just increasing energy, managing difficult emotions um, more easily, you know, the willingness to just let them roll through. And the thing is, is that the antidote is different for everybody, right? So it's not about me saying the antidote to fear is this. It's about me saying, let's feel this fear together and really let our, give ourselves permission to feel it all the way through and then see what arises in each individual you know, as their own antidote. And so I think going through the process of this and really being willing to let ourselves feel and to know that there's something on the other side of that feeling as well, that is, is a gift. So that, that's the primary difference is there's, there's deep alchemy going on that did not go on in the other series. And, and it has a different vibe altogether just because of time and place. Wow, that's really fascinating. Let's follow this uh, a little bit. Now you are at uh, probably the healthiest state that you've ever been in. You're you're tuned in. You're living this amazing groovy life, and you're transmitting uh, th this healing. I'm wondering then, because people are wondering, are there contraindications? Is this safe for everybody? So I'm wondering if we can take that a step further, since you're coming from this place of uh, truly expansion and and you know, wowness. Can somebody who's on the other end, somebody who's in really, you know, having true difficulty, will this help them? Will this short circuit them? Do they have to watch out for anything? Well, you know, in the early years of my practice with biofield tuning, and, I, and we're talking decades ago, really, um, I observed that there were certain conditions in one-on-one -on -one sessions that it it wasn't as it wasn't helpful for you know it, it wasn't and it would create detox for people um so there, there's a couple of places with our one-on-one -on -one sessions where we say no cancer if you're really sick don't do it um we don't want to work on pregnant women because we don't know and we don't want to experiment um that said in these group sessions and i've conducted hundreds of them over the years um we've never had any kind of adverse report from anybody you know nobody has people have said yes i've gotten detox um you know which can be i'm a little mucusy i got a headache because i wasn't hydrated enough uh, i had some interesting experiences in the bathroom um, I was exhausted or waves of emotion, but nothing, you know, we've never had any kind of report of, of anything life threatening or anything like that. It is, it is a lot of energy. It does move. And I think, you know, the people who did the courses that I did last year, uh, a lot of them were surprised at the detox that they experienced. But in our work, you know, we say better out than in. We want the junk that's in our body, the emotional junk, the cell poop, the stuff that's stuck and not getting out. We want that to come out. You know, that that's, that's a desirable outcome. Um, but, you know, if, if people are very ill or very delicate, this particular series might be a little too potent. And I would just, you know, check with yourself and see how you feel about it. Um, a surprising amount of energy can be moved 
you know, remotely like this. So, um, they are powerful, but I think, I think they're powerful, but also, um, gentle too. You know, if you get detox, it lasts a few days and then you're through it and you always feel better coming out the other side of it. Okay, great. Thank you for addressing that. There really were a few people, they, they really want to do the course, but they want to be careful. So thank you for that. Um, gosh, there's so many different topics coming up. Let's try to stay on topic for just a minute here. This is from Darlene. Uh, she's uh, referring to your conversation with Stephen, uh, where you, you mentioned that we hold anger in our liver. And I've been diagnosed with liver issues. Will taking this course allow me to safely and gently release the anger that may be causing these medical issues? Well, you know, you can set an intention. I mean, that's something that <clears throat> that people can always do, you know, going into anything. You can say, I'm going to let my body receive, you know, as much of this as it can do comfortably. You, you don't have to take the full dose in in sessions. You get the recordings, right? So so you can just go, okay, I'm, I'm going to really set a clear intention that my body is going to receive exactly what it needs to receive in this viewing um, in order for me to manage it comfortably. And, you know, and and make it so. I mean, our our mind and our will and our intention really does work that way. You know, if we believe it and we and we express it with conviction, so that you know that's always a possibility. Um, I, I think that it can be as gentle or as powerful as our bodies want and need and are ready for it to be. But I didn't. I mean, you know, we had a lot of people in those courses last year. I don't, I didn't get a single report from anybody that they, they felt like it was too much. You know, some people were like, whoa, that was a doozy. <laughs> you know, some people did have that experience, but they all seem to be really grateful for it, understanding better out than in and, uh, and able to manage it. Nothing, I've never gotten a report from any distance session I've ever done that it created an unmanageable situation. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, Jackie's wondering uh, how long before you begin to feel results? Oh, I mean, you can feel it instantly in a session. You know, a lot of people feel energy moving in their body. They'll feel emotions come up. You'll start crying. You might start, you know, feeling the need to shake. Um, in every session of these, when, um, when we go into that alchemy, there is a real need to kind of, you know, like what they, in trauma release therapy, it's a lot about shaking. Or you see an animal have a kerfluffle with another animal, they're going to shake afterwards. So there, you know, you will probably notice something after every session to some degree. And it's certainly cumulative because each one builds on the one before it. I think what most people say that they experience, people start to feel lighter. They start to feel brighter. They start to feel calmer. They notice that they're less triggered by the people around them. They start to come up with new solutions to old problems. You know, there, there's a lot of benefits that, that, that come with it. It's not just in how you feel, but in the way that you re are responding to your life as well. Okay, great. Um, so here's another topic entirely. Uh, Pete wants to know, could a deaf person still benefit from sound healing by being able to feel the vibrations with their body? Does this work for them? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. You know, I've done these sessions at a distance on people with no line of communication open and they have felt the outcome. I can, I can read and adjust somebody's field from a distance. So it doesn't matter if you're deaf. I mean, I think a deaf person would be a great practitioner of this work, quite frankly, because what I operate primarily on when I work, especially with the, my weighted forks that I can't hear, is my sense of feel. So, you know, our entire body uh, perceives and feels and responds to sound, not just our ears. And, um, and what is happening in this work, and it's really important that people understand, is it's not, when you're watching a module, it's not the sound alone that you're hearing that's impacting you it's that you're tuning into this energetic transmission that was conducted and you are you're you're dialing into it and and receiving that energetic adjustment it's not just about what's happening through your ears it's about your entire electric body having this experience Okay. Well, so uh, as sort of a follow up Kim wants to know uh, how do you choose the frequencies that you're using? 
Well, I have a handful of frequencies um, that I use. I have, I make use of, currently I make use of three weighted tuning forks and three unweighted tuning forks. So that's my palette, you know, that I choose from when I'm working. And I use all of those depending on what feels the most appropriate in any given moment. And that comes just from a lot of experience, you know, a lot of years of doing it, knowing, kind of sensing which one to pick and use where. Hmm. Okay, so do the participants need to have their own tuning forks or is this they, they just come and they experience what you are tuning? Yeah, I want to make it really, really clear that this is not a tuning fork training course. Okay, this is, I'm not showing you how to use tuning forks. This does not count towards biofield tuning certification. This is an opportunity for you to receive. And, and the way that I approach my sessions is they're a combination of coaching, of education, and this virtual biofield tuning adjustment. And so you require nothing other than your ears and your eyes. Uh, that said, I do um, have this tuning fork that some of you guys already have. It's called a sonic slider, and it has a boot attached to the end. It's called a circuit boot. And we've made this available at a discount for users to incorporate in the program. And the way that you use this tuning fork is you, you activate it and then you, you rub it on your skin. So you, you basically, you know, you can do it on your face, you can do it on your neck, on your body, you can activate it and just hold it on your sternum and just breathe. If you've got a headache, you can put it on your head. If you have weak digestion, you can run it on your belly. Um, it, it has a lot of benefits. I mean, essentially what it does is it imparts coherent mechanical energy into your body. And it has a lot of different outcomes that people have reported all kinds of stuff from diminished anxiety, improved sleep, improved digestion, um, pain relief, faster recovery from exercise. Uh, some people have lost weight using it, have toned muscles, have noticed that their skin has become firmer. Um, it has a lot of benefits and it's just a very useful self-care tool to have at home in this, you know, in these times people, um, kids love it, pets, many, many pets love them. Um, and, you know, I've got a lot of stories of people using it on themselves and their pet comes over and wants to be in the mix. And it's just a super useful tool to have at home, especially while stress is running so high. It, it gets people to settle and to breathe, to come to presence. So it's just super useful. But is it necessary for you to do? No, it's just an option. Okay, great. Um, it, it, since you've mentioned animals, uh, we've got a question here from Pamela, who again is referring to the conversation you had with Stephen when you were actually doing uh, some tuning there. Uh, Pamela says, the birds got loud when you used the tuning fork and then went back to intermittent sounds. So what does that mean? How, why were the birds reacting that way? I gave it a, a session outside not that long ago. Um, it was a group tuning on, um, you know, just our kind of global situation. And while I was doing that, a, a lot of birds showed up. I noticed um, these big birds here that they call a uh, man of war that I don't usually see here. Um, about five of them were circling overhead. Other birds were coming and landing in the trees around me. Um, I don't know, a lot of people have been reporting interesting bird encounters lately though. You know, we're, we're not the only ones observing this. I think that uh, the, the, I've heard a lot of people ex express that, that they're feeling more connected to the birds, more aware of the birds, more present with the birds. And um, and animals do tune into this sort of thing. You know, they, they do pay attention. Um, a lot of people who receive this work will say their cat or their dog insists on coming in when it's happening. You know, even if they're listening through headphones and the animal can't hear it, the animal senses the energy. So, you know, animals, they're more dialed in than the rest of us. And I think they're curious about this sort of thing, paying attention on some level for sure. Right. Right. Yeah. My, I know my cat loves it. She's always all yeah. over the place when I'm using mine. Uh, but you mentioned headphones. Uh, so let's go to a question here from Magdalene who says, is listening to the sounds on headphones okay or is it better without? 
No, you can listen with headphones. It's really a matter of personal preference. Um, a lot of people listen to my sessions through headphones. Some people just use their speakers. You know, you have to figure out what, what is best for you, what you're most comfortable with. Okay, great. Uh, so going back to uh, an individual's use of, of tools, their choices, uh, Asia is wondering, what's the difference between singing bowls and tuning forks in terms of why one would choose one over the other? Well, it depends on whether it's for self or other, right? Uh, so um, regarding use for self, you know, you can activate a singing bowl and listen to the tone. You can activate an unweighted tuning fork and listen to the tone. Um, and in both of those, this idea you can, you know, strike a chime or anything like that. The idea of just being present and listening brings us into that alpha brainwave state, you know, so that's going to settle us down. So we can really use any single tone instrument to treat ourselves in that way of simply bringing ourselves into presence and going into listening mode instead of thinking mode, right? Which many people are finding themselves struggling with overthinking, which then creates upset in the body. And so that's a very simple way, you know, to just, I'm going to listen to this. Um, if you're talking about therapeutic use sort of beyond that, I mean, a, a tuning fork is much more adaptable than a bowl. Um, tuning forks, we can use them in the field very precisely. They're much easier to carry around, <laughs> much, much easier. Um, the weighted forks, you know, we, we can use these on the body and, and rub them on ourselves. You know, you can't, you can't do that with a bowl. Um, a a tuning fork is just a much more versatile uh, sound therapy tool, in my opinion. You know, I'm somebody who likes to keep things simple and light and easy and uh, hauling around, you know, bowls with me um, was never appealing thing. <laughs> and, and even when it comes to just sounding, I prefer personally the clear, brighter tones of tuning forks over bowls, you know, if you're just sitting in meditation with them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so I've got two questions from Christine and they're completely different. So let's take them one at a time. Uh, and the first question is one that other people are asking as well. Uh, how does this work over a distance and through the computer and through time and space? So just let's let's talk about how this works where you've already recorded these and, and you know the question, you've answered it before. I mean, I've answered it a lot. Um, well, the, the simple answer is, is that it does. <laughs> like it does and it, and it works consistently this way and you know I want people to really understand that I did not believe it was possible to do this work at a distance one-on-one -on -one back in the day like I thought it was the most ridiculous thing I'd ever heard like sound healing at a distance like sound waves on the body people like what nonsense that it could even happen at a distance right and then I think a lot of people feel that way when they hear that sort of thing it sounds like nonsense and you know and I was pretty arrogant about it um until somebody really twisted my arm and got me to try it on them. And I did a distance session on a friend of mine who's an MD and he was in California and I was in Vermont and we didn't even have a line of communication open. And I approached the table as if he was really there at this empty treatment table and I did my thing with my tuning forks. You know, I went in and I was like, okay, I'm pretending he's there. I'm gonna read his field. I'm gonna do adjustments and I took notes. I took notes like every place I hit, you know, certain ages, certain organs, inflammation here, this, that, the other, just like I would do if somebody was there. And then when I was done, I called him and I went through my notes and he said, Eileen, that's all exactly correct, like exactly correct. And I could feel you working on me and I experienced a state change, like I feel different now. And I was like, get out of town. Right? Like seemed it seemed impossible. And I had no idea how it worked. I couldn't have explained it to you then. I had no freaking clue. All I know is that it did, right? And so then when my private practice got so busy that I I just couldn't see people one on one anymore, um, my friend Marcy Shimoff suggested that I try doing a group. And I'm like, that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Like group distance teeny fork healing. Like Who's ever going to do that? It's like, well, what could be more woo woo, you know, than that? Uh, so the I did one. The very first one I did, we had 140 people sign up for it. 
And this is back in 2015, the beginning of 2015. That one, there was also no open line of communication. Um, it was just tune in by intention. Eileen's going to be doing this. Lie down, close your eyes, think about Eileen, and see what happens. And um, we did that as a Facebook event. And a really wild thing happened in that. Like, I was working, and it was a trip to go from one people, one person to 140. Like, that was, it was definitely weird on my end. Um, but when I got to the heart center, this massive sort of group adjustment happened and this whoosh went through me, it went through the room. And I, my assistant Jillian was there at the time and I'm like, note the time, cause that was really, that was wild what just happened. So we wrapped it up at the top of the hour and we went on to Facebook and we were looking at all these comments coming in, like one after the other. And people are like, right around 45 minute mark, I felt this whoosh <laughs> go through. Right. So all of these people, and then I did a few more for free and I polled everybody. I said, you know, I'm like, is this really working? Are you really feeling something like, is this? Yeah. Yeah. And people were like, yeah, it felt like you were talking to me, you know? And so I was like, okay, let's do this. You know, did I know how it was working? No. Did I observe that the outcomes were consistent? Yeah. You know, do you know how your cell phone works? Probably not, <laughs> you know? And at this point I've trained thousands of people how to do distance sessions, hundreds of thousands of distance sessions and group distance sessions, because I've got a whole bunch of people doing groups now, and the outcome is consistent. The experience is the same. Therefore, there must be some kind of law of nature that allows for this to take place. Now, the way that I describe it is resonance in the ether. Some people might take that same idea and call it quantum entanglement. Um, but we are essentially non-local beings, you know, we, if I can access your biofield out here, if I can adjust your memories and, and, and do an adjustment on you out here, if you are out here, where do you end? You don't. We're all infinite beings. We're all just a speck, a point of perspective in the infinite field of all of creation, everything that ever is, was, or will ever be is just like I can access everything that ever is or was in your own field and read it and work with it. Like that's stored in the supercomputer that is the universe in its entirety. And, you know, when I work on an individual, I say it's sort of like if you've ever worked on a Google document with somebody else, where you might have a colleague on the other side of the world and you both pull up this file and you can edit that file together through the internet. It's kind of a similar thing. I can pluck the file that is you out of the ether, just like I did that very first time, and I can work on it. And I can also create a hologram in my mind that has the information field of everyone who will ever watch this video and that they're present there. And it's like they are and it works. So, you know, can I give you a detailed scientific explanation of the exact mechanics of that? No, uh, you know, <laughs> I can give you an approximation of what it may be, but I can tell you with absolute certainty that the hypothesis has been tested over and over and over and over again, and it always yields the same results. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for addressing that question. That was a it was an important one. Uh, now, Christine's second question. Uh, this is more about the the purpose of the course is to help clear emotions. She's saying, what if it's hard to call up certain emotions to clear them? Is it even necessary for uh, the participants to make any effort, or is it just a matter of tuning in? Yeah, it's a little bit of both. I mean, you know, some some places I hit are going to hit certain people harder than others. Um, some people are very sensitive, you know, and they feel it right away. And other people need a few sessions before they start to feel it. So if you don't feel anything in the first session, don't say I'm not going to feel anything because it's the same with in-person sessions. You know, I can have somebody who comes and especially people are really disconnected from their emotions. I can be working in their field, hit a huge patch of turbulence and say to them, you know, what are you noticing? And they'll be like, nothing. You know, and that's just because they've disconnected themselves from from their feeling state. But when that person comes in for their second or third session, 
they're feeling stuff. You know, they start to get it. They stop trying to be so analytical and become and allow themselves to be more experiential. And then they start to actually experience it and, and the feelings that are, are coming up. Some things will arise very easily. Some things will be like, wow, I'm not feeling that at all. But then I also ask, it's like, this isn't just about you as an individual or us as a group. It, it's about us as alchemists for humanity as a whole. It's, you know, there, there's a bigger calling in, in this practice because those of us who are empaths, who are sensitives, who feel the storm of the collective way more than we want to, will be able to use this information to make your experience as an empath much more tolerable. And you won't feel like you're being buffeted about by forces beyond your control. I mean, I'm one of the most sensitive people I know, and it's been a lifetime journey for me to, to navigate a relatively insensitive environment as an extremely sensitive person. And, you know, I've had to figure out how do when I go out, step out of my house every day and I can feel the vibe of, of the collective today, it's buckling at the knees today. It's weeping in grief today. All hell is breaking loose and I feel it in my body. I don't want to be a victim of that. I want to acknowledge it. I want to feel it and experience it, but then I want to know how to move on and, and be able to be free to enjoy the parts of my day that are free to be enjoyed so that I'm not stuck as an empath, um, you know, just in the world pain and not knowing what to do about it. This is going to teach you how to alchemize this stuff, how to feel it, how to acknowledge it, how to transform it within yourself, within others, within the collective. And, and it isn't even really about getting rid of emotions. Like my work isn't about getting rid of emotions. My work is about understanding emotions better and accepting and understanding our emotions and and discovering what a healthy experience of those emotions looks like you know because i'll tell you i cry almost every day so i'm not even eliminated emotions if i'm reading something that's really sad i'm going to sit there and i'm going to cry you know and that's okay because i let myself do it and then i'm over it and then like a kid five minutes later somebody might make me laugh about something Right. So understanding, we want to understand our emotions. We don't want to eliminate emotions. You know, we want as human beings to be free to paint with every color in our paint box because that's what we are, you know, and what we do. But we don't want to feel like we that we're victims of it or that we're stuck in it or that we can't get out of it or, you know, so so this is just a way to help you be a better sailor, basically, with your emotions and the collective emotions. And I think that everyone's going to come out with with feeling like a much better sailor, you know, where you're like, whoop, here comes this emotion. I'm going to let myself feel it. I'm going to see what the alchemy happens, you know, when I let myself feel it. And I'm going to and I'm going to be able to move through it with ease instead of fighting and resisting and judging and all the suppressing and Netflixing and chocolating, you know, all the things that we do that aren't healthy to manage our emotions. <laughs> right. Netflix and chocolate, you nailed it. <laughs> I mean, you can do that too. You know? <laughs> well, for those of you who are just joining us, we're here with Eileen McCusick learning about her upcoming course, Sound Healing Alchemy to Transmute Difficult Emotions, which begins Tuesday, June 9th. And you can log on to soundalchemycourse.com for all the details and to register. So let's go ahead and get back into questions here. Uh, we've got people wondering, uh, what are the benefits of listening to the sessions more than once, or is that even necessary? I think that what I've learned from people who avail themselves to these things that I produce that um, that they get a lot of benefit from listening multiple times. There is there's a lot of layers of information in each session so that what you experience listening in one pass might be very different than if you listen to it again three days later um, or if you go back to it a year later. So I think that I think optimally, you know, if you're doing the course, you might listen to it once on Tuesday and then listen to it again on Friday if you've got time, you know, and then the next one the following Tuesday. Is it necessary? No, but you'll definitely hear and feel things that you didn't the first time. People always miss stuff, you know, <laughs> and so um, 
the I think you get more benefit the more that you go back to them. Okay, great. Now we've also got a lot of people asking about uh, specific medical conditions, and obviously you can't offer medical advice, but just an overall view, people are wondering, uh, will it help with uh, with hypothyroidism, uh, Parkinson's, tremors, uh, cancer? You know, there's so many people with so many medical issues. How can this help? Well, <clears throat> you know, there's a few things that I've observed in, in many years of private practice and, and treating many people is that at the root of most disorders is some kind of mismanaged emotion. Now, obviously not every single one. I mean, I believe that, you know, people can have food and diet issues and be affected by those and not realize it. Um, you know, there is a certain genetic component in some things um, less than I believe we've been taught that there is. Um, and, you know, environmental stuff, you know, toxins, but most things boil down to some kind of imbalance in our mind, in our thoughts, in our feelings, and, and, and a low self-worth around actually solving the problem. You know, the kernel of every dysfunction I've ever encountered is some kind of belief that we're not worthy. Because here's the thing, is that we have the codes for perfect health in us and around us. You know, I'm 51 and, and I've gotten a lot of the noise and resistance out of my signal at this point. I've, I've availed myself of a lot of tuning and a lot of other things. I've backed out every single health issue I ever had. You know, and, and I had a lot. I had chronic pain. I had... I had a lot of stuff. You know, people see me now and they think, oh, Eileen, you've just always been healthy. No, you know, talk to anybody who knew me back in 2010. No, you know, I was I was broke and overweight and sick and miserable like everybody else. You know, <laughs> it's just that I had the good fortune of two things that I think most people don't have the good fortune. One, I learned how to think electrically. And that changed everything for me. And that's what I'm gonna teach you in this program. Like, what does it mean to think electrically? What does it mean to start to consider our body from an electric perspective and take care of our electric health? Because I didn't solve any of those problems of being broke, overweight, sick, in pain and miserable <clears throat> through thinking chemically and mechanically. I tried that for decades and it didn't work. So, so discovering plasma, the fourth state of matter, coming to understand our electric bodies and also starting to receive biofield tuning from my first students are the two ingredients that that solves all the problems that I was trying struggling to solve for years. Okay, so those are two things that I'm going to introduce to you. You're going to learn to think electrically. You're going to understand how mismanaged emotions and low self-worth are at the root of most disorders. And I'm going to give you skills and tools to help you to manage those better. And I'm gonna teach you to stop thinking in terms of like the chemical mechanical perspective on the body. Your electric body is primary. And when you get your electric body in order, your physical body follows. So it, we're not just you know, giving you information. Like I'm gonna change the whole way that you look at life, your body, your health, universe, everything into a different way that is a much more correct and effective way. And that's gonna allow you to start to solve problems in your life that you have not been able to solve because you know, the same problems I had were there. And, and I've done this, you know, seen this with countless people that, that have gone through this work. The way that they, they step into their power, they step into their potential, they stop telling themselves stories of, you know, limitation and lack. We're gonna really explore the power of the word and how what you say about who you are and what your experience is, is gonna shape it. I mean, you're not gonna walk around saying I have hypothyroidism after this course, you're not going to say, I have this, I have that. You're going to say, I'm a healthy person. I make healthy choices. My body is healthy, strong, and beautiful. You're going to understand the role that you play in creating your health with your own emotions, your thoughts, and your words. We have a lot more control over our health and our well-being than we realize we do. And it becomes a lot easier to access through thinking electrically and approaching medicine and, and remedy 
in to our electric body. Mm. All right. Wow. I, I thank you for that. That was a, a wonderful explanation. Um, and looking at the clock here, we have time for a few more questions. But before we take those, uh, I'll go ahead and give a few details about the course itself. Uh, once again, it's called Sound Healing Alchemy to Transmute Difficult Emotions. And this is going to be a, really a powerful, life-changing seven-week journey with Eileen under her expert guidance where you receive biofield tuning practices to become an emotional alchemist as you boost your immune system and rediscover the courage and playfulness beneath your difficult feelings. And the seven week course takes place on Tuesdays at 5 p.m. Pacific beginning Tuesday, June 9th. And as mentioned previously, if you can't join us live, that's fine. You will not miss the teachings because you will receive audio and video recordings, uh, word for word transcripts, and all course handouts on your course homepage. We make it really easy for you to access them. Uh, also, I want to remind everyone that the Shift Network offers a no risk money back guarantee on all of our courses, giving you a full two weeks until June 23rd in this case to make sure that it's a good fit and that you absolutely love it. And as an added option, all participants are welcome to connect in a private Facebook community group so you can stay connected with one another. Also, Everyone who registers receives the Sound Healing Alchemy to Transmute Difficult Emotions bonus collection. First, you'll receive an audio teaching from Eileen entitled The Vagus Nerve. And next, you'll get an audio teaching from Eileen called Brain Vagus Nerve Integration. And then you'll receive an audio teaching from Eileen entitled Deep Cleaning the Blood. And you will also get a 20% discount on the sonic slider that she showed you and the circuit boot, which goes on the end, allows you to move it across your skin. Uh, and when you register by midnight Pacific on Wednesday, June 3rd, you will receive these extra bonus gifts. And that is two audio teachings from Eileen, one called Deep Cleaning the Small Intestine and the other called Deep Cleaning the the large intestines. So lots of good bonuses there. Uh, but before, Eileen, before we get back into questions, um, this is a, a, a new concept for you. What are you most looking forward to sharing in this one? Well, I think that the, the alchemy piece was just so fascinating to conduct, you know, and I'm not sure that I've ever presented it in the way that I present it in this series. And, um, it was definitely, um, you know, something that, that stayed with me, this whole idea of just really being with the whatever difficult emotion. I, it just happened to me a few days ago, you know, I was reading the news about all the riots that happened over the weekend and just, you know, had a, had a bit of time of just really being in it. And that's fine. I don't mind, you know, crying for the collective. It's worth crying over. You know, we're human and this is, it's hard to see all, all of this, every single aspect of it, you know? Um, but, but the willingness to just sit with that and, and then to be in the spaciousness that, that arises afterwards, you know, that comfort of like something is knowing that if I'm just with it and it's going to come through and come out the other side. And then there's, there's a solution, there's an antidote, there's a spaciousness. I mean, everybody knows that when you have a really good cry, you know, you always feel there's that sort of peace and spaciousness that comes after that release. And, um, and so trusting that, you know, trusting, trusting on one's ability to, to just go with the flow of, of what's going on in your body. One of the biggest things that undoes us is resistance in our electrical system. And we've been taught to, to break emotions down into these are good and those are bad and these are right. And this is wrong. And, you know, we, we judge our own visceral experience to life and we are like, Oh, I can't feel rage. You know, that's really bad. And I shouldn't feel hate. And, you know, and that that's not, the way to manage emotions. So um, there, there's a lot of education about emotional management in here that I don't think you're going to get anywhere else. You know, I mean, none of us, I, I like to ask people, I'm like, how many of your parents modeled effective emotional management? And you know how many people raise their hands when I ask that in classes? Like none. <laughs> Like, like, I don't know that anybody's ever raised their hand and said, yeah, my parents modeled effective emotional management. 
we don't, we haven't learned it. And the only reason I've learned it is because of many, many years of doing this work, coming to understand, wow, it's, it's a mismanagement of emotions that is making everybody sick. You know, we, we call it stress, you know, 85% of disease is caused by stress. What's stress? Stress is, is having an emotional response and not knowing what to do with it or how to manage it. I mean, I've seen a lot of people lately getting pretty drunk. <laughs> like, okay, that that's our answer. I'm just going to have that third glass of wine tonight, you know? And um, I mean, that's okay. It works somewhat, you know, here and there. But ultimately, we all would benefit from understanding and managing our emotions better and then being able to be a model for that for people around us. Mm. All right. Yeah, you've you've brought up a couple of interesting points that lead us in a couple different directions here. So let's start with um, you mentioned our parents not necessarily being good models. So Marilyn's got a question. Uh, when you flush out a past emotion or emotions from your ancestral river, is that emotion cleared forever? Yeah, I do think it is. And, you know, and I've done a lot of work with clearing out ancestral stuff because like just, for example, sadness, you know, sadness is an emotion that I accumulated a lot of um, in childhood. And when I first started doing healing, when I first started practicing yoga, you know, I would be in something like plow and I got my big fat belly hanging in my face and all the sadness <laughs> that was there, you know, like that. I think a lot of people can relate to body work bringing up emotion. Um, and it took me a long time um, to clear out the backlog of my own sadness, um, only to discover that, wow, I was carrying my mother's sadness too. And then I had to kind of work on that. Um, last year in a class, my, one of my teachers was using me as a demonstration body. And, uh, and she's like, oh, you know, Eileen's had so many sessions, like this is gonna be easy. And when she was out at the outer edge of my field on the left side, like before she even got into my own field, we encounter ancestral information in that outer boundary. And she hit something and somehow I knew, she knew, and the whole class knew that it was my grandmother's sadness that was, that she was hitting and that we were processing. And, and I really felt that as like an imprint in my own DNA. Right. I mean, I, as an egg was inside my mom and inside my grandmother. So on a certain etheric level, I was imprinted by her emotions. Never mind it being in the energetic. That's the word I use, the tone of the song of our DNA um, imprinting and in, in myself. And so as um, I was getting worked on, I felt this knot in my shoulder, you know, that I've had ever forever to varying degrees. Um, a certain layer of that released and let go as we were clearing the imprint of my grandmother's energy. It was my mom's mom, whose name I didn't even know. Like, this woman was died before I was born. I had to contact my older siblings and be like, what is mom's mom name? Like, I just healed her today <laughs> on a certain level. Um, so, you know, when we, when we do this healing in ourselves, it, it goes backwards in time. It goes, it goes downstream to our descendants. It radiates out both locally and non-locally. When we become more clear more coherent, more grounded, then we become like a tuning fork and we inform our environment and the people in our environment with our grounded coherence, you know, and this is what the world needs more than anything. You know, we talk about creating coherent emitters in this work and that the more you become the in-tune instrument that you were designed to be, the more you just naturally tune the world around you wherever you go. Hmm. That's, you know, I'm fascinated by ancestral healing, so I'm, I'm listening with my ears perked up. Now, what you said was when somebody was working on you, when one of your teachers was working on you, and they were in that ancestral river, everybody knew when she hit this. Was it uh, the sound changed or the vibe in the room? How did everybody know? Yeah, it's an interesting phenomenon. And she was actually using weighted forks. So, you know, like the sonic slider, um, when this gets activated, you don't hear it. And she was using a weighted fork. So it was a vibe. It was just a vibe. She hit, and it wasn't in the ancestral river. Well, the ancestral rivers run on either side of our body. Um, and the left side, we pick up 
mother information and the right side father, but we also pick up ancestral information at the very outer boundary of the field, you know, sort of in our preconception um, experience. And, and it was there that she hit it. Nobody heard anything. It was just a feeling, a knowing. I mean, this is what happens in our classes too, you know, that, that there's a kind of group knowing, um, feeling, sensing that takes place. And it was just in that particular moment, it was just really obvious to everybody for whatever reason. Wow, uh, fascinating. Um, but let's get back to other people's questions here. Um, uh, Regina's asking, this is uh, something that you and Stephen were talking about, about the bones uh, holding fear. And Regina's wondering, uh, why do the bones hold fear? I mean, why does anything, why does the liver hold anger? Or, you know, why does the heart hold hate and grief? Um, you know, it, it's just the way we're built, I guess. And, you know, you think about, uh, it's like the response to fear. Cause we were talking about how in, when we have those fight or flight moments, um, like, whoops, we just passed a police car, you know, going a little fast. And that, that feeling of like <gasps> that adrenaline rush, right? That, that discomfort that comes when all of a sudden you don't feel safe. Like, we feel that in our bones you know we've been told oh it's adrenaline you think oh kidney adrenal complex like my adrenals are shooting out <laughs> you know um chemicals but but next time something scary happens pay attention to your bones and pay attention to what happens in your bones um i can't say why you know other than in a fight or flight situation, your bones better be engaged and ready to go, you know, ready to fight, ready to flight, ready, whatever. Um, it's not just your muscles and, and that there is, um, you know, our, our, our bones are electric. They are crystalline electric structures that make electricity when compressed, which means that they have and hold and release energy. So, you know, they're a storehouse for this electrical energy and, um, and fear causes a response in them, you know, as far as like why the creator made it that way or why I don't really know, but I would just invite you to pay attention, you know, next time something like that comes up and observe your bones and observe what you notice. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Uh, let's go to a question here from Jen who wants to know, do the tuning forks help carry messages or intentions beyond biofield tuning? Well, you know, I do. Yeah. I mean, I think that sound can boost prayer, for example. Um, I, I've done healings. There's a blog on my website called Tuning the Bees, and it's about an experience that I had where I was telepathically connected by, connected to by like the, the hive mind of bees. And, um, and I, and they asked for help. And so I went out and with a 528 Hertz tuning fork and I imagined the bees, you know, just the morphic field of the bees and struck my tuning fork and listened. And the way that it works with me with the tuning forks is that I listen and I, and I understand the dissonance, like I'm able to translate what the tuning fork is saying. There's a certain universal language of vibration that all biofield tuning students learn. And they, they learn some of it right away in class. And then the rest they learn, you know, over time when you start to identify different tones and what they mean. And it just comes because we, because we all speak that language naturally. Um, animals and plants, like all of creation on this plane has the same vibrational language. You know, a dog experiences fear the same way you do. That's how a dog that's a thousand feet away from you senses your vibe of fear. They're not smelling you, you know, <laughs> like from that far away, they're sensing your vibe. Same with if, a, if an attractive character walks into a room where you're at, you sense their vibe from across the room. You're not smelling their pheromones. Right, so there, there's a whole electromagnetic kind of language here um, that that we learn. And now I forgot what the question was. Can you repeat it? <laughs> uh, do the tuning forks uh, actually carry messages or intentions? 
Yeah. So, so simply by hanging out with a tuning fork and listening to this language and then hearing it and understanding it, striking it again with the desire and the intention to support the tuning fork in tuning whatever that is, you know, it, so we can, we can boost prayer. We can, we can tune anything that we think of just by striking a tuning fork and saying, I'm going to listen to the sound of, you know, the bees or, um, you know, whatever other animal or thing might be, you know, in danger aspect of the natural world that we really care about water, you know, all the water on the planet. I want to tune the water. I want to pray for the water. I want to pray that everyone has access to clean water and I'm going to strike a tuning fork while I do it. And uh, that is going to give me information and it's going to add coherent energy to my prayer. So I, I really do believe they help. I think that they, that using a tuning fork in prayer or inhaling is much more effective than not using one. Hmm. Okay. Uh, we've just got a minute and this is a big question. So I apologize for that, but it's, it's a perfect follow-up to what you were just saying. Uh, when not in this course specifically, but if you're working with a tuning fork and, and intentionally sending healing towards somebody, uh, is the recipient aware that it's happening and do you need to have their permission to That's send it question. out to them? We don't do biofield tuning on people without their permission because a biofield tuning session extends beyond prayer. You know, a biofield tuning session is an entry into a person's field, which is also their mind. And I don't know anybody that wants to have somebody doing an intrusion on their biofield or their mind without permission. You know, it's uh, working on people with this method without their permission is an absolute no, no. Um, doing, doing assisted prayer by simply striking a tuning fork and holding someone in your mind and, you know, just holding a fork in front of you and wishing for the best for them, you know, that they can receive it or not. That that's a different thing. You know, we, we can pray, we have permission to pray for people, um, and to, to boost that with sound. But the, the work of biofield tuning is very individualized. It's very precise. It involves shifting their energies around and that absolutely requires permission. All right. Thank you for squeezing that last question. And it was an important one. Uh, it, it, time always goes so fast talking to you, Eileen. Um, this has been a fantastic uh, conversation. I want to thank our viewers for being with us today and for all of your terrific questions. Once again, Sound Healing Alchemy to Transmute Difficult Emotions begins Tuesday, June 9th. And again, please visit soundalchemycourse.com to learn more and to register. So before we cut you loose to go play on the beach, Eileen, do you have any final words for our viewers? Well, you know, that just hang in there, guys. You know, this too shall pass. I know that it's a crazy week. It's a crazy time. Um, you know, keep bringing yourself back to now, back to this moment, back to your breath. Listen to the birds. Um, get your bare feet on the ground, you know, get hugs if and when you can ever get them. Um, you know, this too shall pass. And, and anybody, you know, if you are, if you are one of those real sensitive people and empath and you feel like you're really like, wow, these waves of all of this that's going on, or maybe just what's in your personal life. Um, you know, I created this course to really help. So if it works for you to join, I really hope you do. And I really hope you find it helpful and effective. All right. Beautifully stated. Thank you again, Eileen. It's it's a pleasure speaking with you today, as always. Thank you for being here with us. Pleasure, Lisa. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm. And once again, thank you to everyone who joined us today. On behalf of all of us at the Shift Network, I wish you well and look forward to having you on this course or another one in the future. Be well, everyone.